Okay, hi guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to edit on iMovie. So this video is highly requested and I'm so excited to finally be showing you guys. I've definitely been teaching myself a few tips and tricks and I'm so excited to share those with you guys today. Let's get to editing. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I always make my rough cut, which is actually just like a rough draft of your video. So what you're gonna do is add in all the videos that you wanna include in your project, and then you're just gonna cut out any unnecessary pauses or any bloopers that you don't really wanna include. Depending on how long your video is, this could take like 20 minutes to an hour, but you can speed up the process with some keyboard shortcuts. So to split a clip, you're just going to press Command B for copy and paste that's command C and command V, and just to delete a clip, that's just delete. So if you're looking to delete like a blooper or something, then all you do is split the clip on both sides of the blooper to make its own separate clip, and then you're just going to delete that. Okay, so if you're looking to be a little bit more precise when you're splitting your clips, then there's actually this slidey thing. I have no idea what it's called, so I just call it the slidey thing. And basically, you can just make your clips bigger or smaller. By spreading out your clips, you can actually cut down your clips by like fractions of a second, which makes editing super precise, and it's just a very helpful tool. But I also like to slide it back down sometimes just to see all my clips together. Before I do anything else, I also like to add some speed adjustments, which I would totally recommend adding to your video. So I like to adjust the speed in my montages and also if I'm making a time lapse. Time lapse are super cool. So to adjust the speed in your video, you're just going to select the clip and then you're going to press this button that kind of looks like a clock. It's on the top right hand side. Then there's going to be a drop down arrow right next to the word normal and you're going to change the word normal to either slow or fast and you could even adjust the speed more precisely by dragging this little circle thing. So sometimes I'll also check off preserve pitch which literally just preserves the pitch. So sometimes my videos will be sideways so there's a super easy fix to that. You're just going to press this button which looks like a square then you're going to rotate the clip using this button. You could also adjust the crop to however you like it. Another simple thing really quickly I like to adjust the volume on a lot of my clips so you could change the volume two ways. Okay so you could either go to the clip directly and just click on the bar and then adjust it from there. Depending on how loud my video is, I sometimes like to bring it all the way up to 400 or you could literally bring it down to zero if you don't want to hear the audio at all, which I actually do a lot sometimes for montages. The second way that you can do that is by just going to this little speaker icon on the top right hand side and then just adjusting that. So this way is actually super helpful if you want to adjust multiple clips at the same time. Basically you just select all the clips that you want the same volume and then you just adjust it. So now we're gonna talk about colors and filters. I do like to color my video sometimes just to make it like pop. To start off I'm just going to press the color balance icon and a lot of the times I'll just press auto and it just automatically improves the video quality which is super nice. So right next to the circle is actually a paint palette icon which is actually for color correction. So with the bigger tool you can adjust your highlights and shadows but I wouldn't recommend using this too much just because I feel like it makes your video kind of crazy bright. Also for montages I like to adjust the saturation just to make your video super colorful. Then the one right next to it just helps you adjust the temperature of your videos just to make them cooler or warmer. Guys I'm obsessed with filters. Find the filters on iMovie you're just going to press the icon that has three circles kind of stacked up on each other. You're going to click that. Right next to the words clip filter you're going to click on the little bar that says none. Then a whole bunch of filters will pop up. So for montages I especially love to use age film, film grain, and vintage. Those are definitely my favorite. If you want to be a little more quirky with your editing, which I love by the way, I would recommend using the effects x-ray or negative or even sci-fi. So right next to the clip filter is actually one of my favorite things on iMovie, which is actually audio effect. Lately my favorites are definitely muffled and telephone. Also some super funny ones are shortwave radio and pitch down too. I also really like <laughs> Okay guys, I would 100% recommend adding some jump cuts and zooms just because they make your video so much more interesting and they're super fun. So to make the jump cut you're just going to select your clip. You're going to split the clip on both sides of where you want it to jump out. So that way you're making a separate clip. Then you're going to select that separate clip. Then you're going to go in the square icon. <laughs> you're going to press crop to fill. Then you're just going to adjust your video. A little tip for you guys if you see the yellow lines crossing each other that means
means that your video is perfectly centered, which is honestly super helpful. So to create a zoom effect, you're just going to go to Ken Burns, which is literally right next to Crop to Fill, and you're just going to adjust your end screen. Like I said before, iMovie gives you a reference on where the center is, so it's super easy to adjust the screen, but obviously you don't have to adjust it to the center. For example, if he wants a spotlight over there, then we could do a little sideways zoom. By the way, comment below what my elephant's name should be, because we should have a name for him. So another random tip in regards to cropping is that since iMovie automatically uses Ken Burns on all photos that you drag into your project, you can actually change the default setting so that it won't do that. If you do like to zoom in on a majority of your pictures, then you might not want to change the setting. But since I use a lot of title slates and overlays, which I will talk more about later in this video, I just felt like it was easier for me to change the default setting. All you need to do is go all the way on the top of your screen to where it says iMovie, and then you're going to press preferences. Right under where it says slow-mo clip, you're going to see photo placement. I changed it from Ken Burns to crop to fill. You could also change the photo duration, which I just changed to one second, but honestly, you can just keep whatever's best for you. So one thing that will bring your video to the next level is using an overlay. I actually use a whole bunch of overlays and there are three ways that I find them. So the first way is just downloading them straight from YouTube. I actually use the website YT2 MP3 and then I actually press MP4 just because the default is MP3 or you can screen record from YouTube or you could also make them on an editing app. I like to make them on Fonto and PixArt, but there are honestly so many more editing apps that you can use. So adding them to your videos is super easy. You're just going to drag the overlay over top of the video that you want the overlay to be on. Right next to the circle icon, there should be a square icon. Where it says cutaway, click the down arrow and press green slash blue screen. So now I'm gonna talk about text. So the way that I do it, you're just going to need to download the app Fonto and you're gonna start by creating plain image. This plain image either has to be a green screen or a blue screen because you are creating an overlay. Then you're just going to adjust that picture to the YouTube size, which usually I'll just put iPhone 6 slash 7 slash 8 plus because it's almost exact. Then you're just going to tap on the screen, add some text, and choose whatever font you want. So I also like to adjust the style of the text. So one way is by adding a little shadow, which you could easily do by just sliding the alpha all the way up and then the blur all the way down. But something that I've recently been doing is adding an outline to the text. Sometimes I'll also adjust the spacing, which makes it look super aesthetic. So then you're just going to add your text the exact same way that you add your overlays. So if you want to add text where you already have an overlay, you're going to select both the video and the overlay, and you're going to copy and paste that into a new project. Then just save that and bring that to your desktop, and then drag it back into your original project. And the final step is to add your text overlay. If you want to add more overlays to the same clip, just keep repeating that process over and over until you have as many overlays as you want. When I use on-screen text, I also like to add some sound effects, which I will be talking about later in the video, so definitely stay tuned. So if you want the text to zoom in, you could just use Ken Burns, which is actually one of the effects that I used earlier in the video. If you want your text to look like it's been typed in, then you're just going to split your clip for however many letters you have. I would recommend making these clips at least three seconds each sometimes two seconds, depending on how fast you want it to type in. So right next to the word clean up, there's actually a little box which you're gonna press and you're going to drag the two little circles until all your letters disappear except one. The second one, you're going to do every single letter except two and so on and so on. By the way, this process is kind of tedious. Yes, this does take a little bit of time. I also like to add the typing sound effect. It just adds to it so much. So if you're wondering how I get this little phone thing right here, I'm gonna teach you guys, don't worry. So basically what you're gonna do is you're going to find a phone image on Google Images and you're just gonna make that into a PNG. Then you're just going to save the PNG that you made and go into the app Fonto, create a blue or green plain image. Then you're just going to add your PNG over top of that and that's your overlay. So basically you just add that into your videos just like you would with an overlay. Then you're just going to copy and paste your video and your overlay into a separate project. Save that, drag that to your desktop and then drag that right back into your original project. Then you're just going to add a screen recording right over top of that. You're going to go into the square icon right next to the circle but instead of pressing green slash blue screen you're going to press picture in picture and then you're going to adjust your screen recording to match your phone perfectly. 
So now I'm gonna talk about sound effects and they really add so much to your videos. There's actually an amazing selection on iMovie. So basically on the top left hand side, right next to my media is the word audio. So you're just going to click that. Right under iTunes is sound effects. There are so many you can choose from. So one of my favorites is definitely bottle cork and it basically sounds like this. They have a typing one as well and you could even use golf hit one, which is super good for transition. <laughs> Sometimes I'll make clips of my video a little bit blurry or a little bit whitish just because I feel like it looks super pathetic. So to make it blurry, you're actually going to go into titles. Then you're going to go all the way down to pull focus. You're going to drag that right over your clip. Just delete the text. You could obviously drag it to make it longer or shorter, whatever you want. So if you want the whitish effect, all you need to do is find a plain white image. Then you're just going to drag it over top of the video. You're going to go into the square icon for video overlay settings. Then you're just going to adjust the opacity. This just makes the white image a little bit more transparent, which leads to the super cool effect. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about borders. You're going to place your video over top of the plain image. Then you're just going to press the double square icon, change cutaway to picture in picture. Then you're just going to adjust the picture however you like it. iMovie helps you center it, which is super cool. So the last thing that I do is add music. So I find most of my music on YouTube. All you need to do is search up non-copyright aesthetic music and you will find some. I like to copy the link and paste it into yt to mp 3com Once you download that, that goes straight into your iTunes, then you could access it right in your project. So don't forget to adjust the sound level. For clips that I'm talking, I usually use the sound level 2 up to 5. And for clips that I'm not talking, I use either 50 to 75. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below if you have any more questions. I am more than happy to answer them for you. Also, if you have any video requests, let me know. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.